Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger going live. This is a beautiful show that I've been honored to do for almost 16 years. And there's a reason why I love to show up. You're a big part of it. So thank you for being on this journey and also the conversations I get to have. Masterclass, right? So this week is no difference because today's show is going to feature a new guest to the program, and that is Tarek Bibi. He's a conscious rap artist infusing healing frequencies in his music and shows how to manifest money miracles. If we're lucky, he might rap for us later. And if we're lucky, he might do some infinite healings, which I'm really looking forward to. Dare to Dream has been listed in Welt Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to, currently voted as COVR Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show, listed as a top show in self-improvement and Apple Podcasts, also has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards and for a Webby Award. The show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work out into the world. And if you want to become a facilitator or take a class, go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R.com and accessconsciousness.com. I'm Debbie Dashinger. I am a media visibility expert and I work specifically with spiritual messengers. And that would be you. I'm a book writing coach. So I help you get that book out from A to Z, self publishing, and complete something highly engaging. I've got a company <clears throat> that takes your book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and I do all the heavy lifting for the author. I also show spiritual entrepreneurs how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get massive results. If you're ready to be visible, and I highly recommend that you are because this is how you get your being and your message out there, then go to debbiedashinger.com slash gift. I've got some free videos and how-tos and templates for you to fill in so you can start doing this work today. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift. My guest is Tarek Bibi, who is a rising star with a massive following, who's already changed the lives of over 1 million people worldwide. He's been labeled an empath, indigo, starseed, earth angel, and light worker. Tarek works with business women and men on the spiritual path to help them thrive doing what they love. Mm. Through his revolutionary infinity healing modality, he's able to help his clients achieve and manifest their heart's desires with infinite ease and grace, even if they've struggled to achieve results before. Tarek is a facilitator of inner transformation, helping people to transcend their emotional and psychological blocks at the core level. And in an instant, Tarek is able to help people release years of pain and problems to live life miraculously. He's a popular speaker on telesummits in the media and festivals, and Tarek is a warm, sincere, and heart-centered presence and heals all who are inspired by his own journey from abuse to living an inspired life. If you'd like to learn more about him, go to his website. It is T-A-R-E-K-B-I-B-I dot com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Tarek to Dare to Dream. It's so great to hang out with you. Thank you, Debbie. I appreciate it. And I love your voice. I love listening to your voice. You're awesome. And I can't wait to play with you here and inspire and touch the lives of our listeners. Yeah, I reached out to you months ago because I heard you doing everything I just described in the bio. And it was interesting because it was a summit and there was it felt like hundreds of people on the summit. But you were a standout for me. And I think the two standouts for me were A, you were doing real-time healings, checking in with people, feeling energy, and you were able to bring something palpable I could feel. And the other thing, of course, was your vulnerability and sharing your story. And I was like, wow, this man has walked the walk, right? So that that affected me deeply. And I thought, we don't really know each other, but let's change that. <laughs> let's <Yeah. laughs> let's Thank make you. that a thing of the past. So I want I just want to start with the healing aspect. Yes. And ask you, 
would it be accurate to say that in the work you do, that you help us to be in the healing vortex to raise our vibrations? What happens there for you when you work with us? Yeah, it's a great question, Debbie. Thanks for asking that. Uh, when I first got into healing, it was hypnosis. So it was very left brain masculine. It was even very old school for me as an indigo child here to birth something new. It felt a little, um, you know, respect to it. They're probably doing it in ancient Egypt and before, but it's like, what is the new thing that's faster and for us for now? Um, and even what I created then needs to be updated every year. But what I learned is the more I was getting myself involved in the process, the less impactful it was, the more I got out of the way, let go, let God, as they say, the more impactful the session was and the more energy I had and the less I was taking on for my clients. So I first started off with the mindset that from school, the more you learn, the smarter you are. And for me, the more I learned, the less I realized I knew. So I, can't, I realized one day, instead of trying to learn everything that infinite intelligence knows in order to be the best facilitator of healing, why not work side by side with infinite intelligence and allow it to do everything it knows to do for the client? So whether you use the word God, source, universe, creator, great spirit, uh, great mystery, all of that. Um, and it was a very humbling experience, Debbie, because growing up, I was told, you know, I'm stupid, I'm a failure, I'm an idiot, I was getting the lowest grades. So finally, I discovered hypnosis and healing. And I was like, I'm good at something. And so, so my ego got really boosted. And very rapidly, it went back into this humility, because it was a moment of look, I'm good at something. I'm doing healing, you know, clients are getting great results with me. And then it went back to the humility of I'm really good at holding space for my clients and source God universe to do infinite things for them. So they get the results. So even to this day, when they say, Tark, you help you healed. It's like, no, I held space for you to heal yourself. Um, you know what I mean? So that's what there's like six things that made infinity healing different. And they were given to me as I was going out there trying to find the best healers to get results in my own life. And out of that frustration, I got the nudge from my guidance to birth something that was fast, effective, efficient, that anyone can do. We have an eight-year-old in India who's helping people clear symptoms of COVID just using the script. So um, yeah, I hope that kind of answers it. So, I wow. Okay. It. Several things there. So mm -hmm. Are you saying at the end, when you say there's an eight-year-old in India using this, so that you also train people to do this modality yes. that- came yeah, to eight, every year uh, we do one live training. There's a level one and there's a level two that goes deeper into like entity clearings and light body activations and trauma healing and mm. um, deeper stuff that I, I'd love to give it all to folks right off the bat, but something told me to separate the two because I'm an overgiver. Yeah. Um, and- to me, my, if I had to choose, like I asked you earlier, superpower, mine would be words. And out of words comes poetry, rap music, uh, even the healing. It's all it's all word based. It's how to use words uh, very strategically to create the biggest impact. And so, yeah, I do train infinity healers. It's been translated to Hindi, Urdu, Arabic, French, Portuguese, um, I mean, a German, I may be missing a few, but it's, it's become, you know, from the kid who, you know, never thought he'll amount to anything and everyone thought I'll be a failure to, to birthing something again, resisting it being like, what do I know? I was 25 at the time, you know, going into these summits where it's all these big names and authors and speakers. And then there's like me. And, um, but thanks to that persistence from my, from my guidance, and birthing something that I really birthed from a place of what do I have that's different and, and having women, like a lot of the clients that resonate with this are women. And I can explain why growing up, I saw women go through a lot of bad stuff and I couldn't do anything as a kid. So now I can. Mm. And I think that's part of it. But hearing women say they've tried all these different modalities and these are, you know, women who are veterans in the healing world. It's not their first rodeo old souls and um come when they 
uh, get a taste of the infinity healing and get the results really fast and share with me that that worked for them when other things didn't it's it's really um you know i humbly i'm reminded of you know you don't have to be better you don't have to be that much different every every you know the unique snowflake thing it's like anything we birth we, you know we on this call there could be a thousand different healers and every single one of us if we were to birth a book like you're talking about or a modality it will attract certain people and there'll be a special sauce to it that would resonate with a certain amount of people um and it you know from the ego setting the ego aside it doesn't have to be better it doesn't have to be um that much different because it's all coming from source but for some reason we keep hearing uh, we've tried everything. We found our way to your process and it worked. And I kind of know why. And it's not about the healing modality. There's, there's these other things that we do to make sure that they're receiving the 100% that's available. Yeah. And I have to concur with what you said about breaking up your program. I learned very early on in my coaching career, it is a kindness to the people attending. And I got, I got that information by virtue of... Uh, and a real-time experience. So I was rolling out one of my first iterations, this must be 13 years ago, of how to become a best-selling author, literally how you can take your book to international bestseller. And I have tons of people sign up. And because I love giving, they do, and I really wanted people to get results. Man, did I have a jam-packed agenda. And literally after the first class, about 10 people dropped out. And they kept claiming they were overwhelmed. And I thought, oh my God, I have to go back to square one and realize I'm trying to jam so much in here mm -hmm. rather than like create architecture and build a foundation and slowly bring and guide people up at a rate they can digest and absorb. 100%. I completely changed that course. I was like, mea culpa, mea culpa, I'm so sorry. And, no. you know, it was a success in the end anyway. But I learned right away, please don't do that, Debbie, because if you want to gift and give, then you have to also want people to receive. So it has to be disseminated in a way that they can eat it in bites that make sense, not the whole buffet all at once. Biggest challenge, Debbie, for anyone who's got like Leo or uh, Aries or maybe even Sag, uh, we think if we were to give less that we're cheating them, we're not giving our, we believe we have to give our all in order to feel authentic to our audience. And same with me. And it's like less is more was, it's so hard. I feel like I'm ripping them off. I feel like I'm being stingy, but it's more like, I don't want them to stuff themselves in this buffet. I want them to have like a wholesome meal where even when we eat food, apparently we're, you know, the less, you know, they say like two, two fists or whatever is like more than enough. So like keep, you don't want them to be stuffed, but we want them to be nourished and then able to come back for dinner and breakfast tomorrow and lunch tomorrow. <laughs> I love yeah. that nourished. Yeah, yeah I agree a hundred percent. And uh, so yeah. I have a personal question to ask you and it's just my curiosity because I know you've been doing an event. You've been doing a summit that you put on the Equinox event and I've been following yes, it. Happy Equinox, Debbie. Thank you. It's uh, what a time awesome. this is. Mm, it's amazing. And what a beautiful time for you to deliver that. And you mm. mentioned something quickly, but you know, if you're in my life, I'm going to follow up with that. Yes. You happen to say that you, you yourself, aren't we all working with healers? You were working with a healer on a very personal issue for you. So reveal as much as you're comfortable, but I'm you very saying, transparent. Debbie. You could just say whatever you heard. No problems. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. So yeah, you were looking at a something that you considered to be a sacred relationship, which by the way, yeah. I am all about it. Like I get the potency of the Yeshua Magdalene kind of, yes. yeah, I long for that too. And so yes. you were saying that you had something that you felt had the qualities of a sacred relationship and you were working with a healer and you found that you were having some commitment issues. Mm -hmm. that things were popping for you while you were taking a look at this. Do you mm -hmm. mind if I ask you, so what came of that? What did you decide or what did you learn? What did you heal? What did you let go of? What did you move into? 
Yeah, I'll answer in my question and what I've heard in the collective. So for me, it was really simple. I met this beautiful Leo goddess and um, there was a strong soulmate connection. I've I've uh, really started before that, the last three years before that, just saying no to anything that didn't feel like a fuck yes on all levels. And then I met her and uh, she's been calling in her life partner, King, if there is such a thing as a, you know, calling in a, a perfect life partner. And I was calling in my long-term queen life partner relationship for for years and what that entailed everyone likes the the part where you know they come together but no one really wants to know what what we have to do to get there so to get there was a saying a lot of no's to anything that didn't feel fully in alignment what got there is learning to love myself and creating a life where I'm nurtured by my soul tribe and my friends and activities and taking care of my health and making my life so juicy and yummy that anyone who comes my way would want to be a part of it. So that's, that's the part not a lot of people talk about. And then, because then your life is so great that if someone decides to join you on that journey, it's the icing on the cake. They're added, you know, they're, it's an addition to a, a full whole complete um, reality as opposed to my old way of thinking where I was like there's this hole in my soul and I need someone to love me because I sometimes don't know how to do that um and that codependency thing doesn't work or the whole narcissist and empath thing we need to break out of those cycles but it was really simple she had um she was uh traveling to visit her ex at the time and I had just gotten to know her and I think there was a strong connection and uh, my Venus is in Aquarius which means let's be friends first let's not rush into it um, and, um, it's like, let's be best friends first. And then from that place, let's explore, um, the next things, uh, to go deeper. And yeah, it was really simple. I was working with my coach and she said, Hey, if you're, it sounds like you don't want to have these, op- you don't want to be openly relating and just my trauma was having relationships where we can experience intimacy and they don't have to be sexual related, but, um, just lightness fun intimacy hugs cuddles and other things but not sex um and and she was like why it's like almost like a settling and it's almost like it's safe and it's also very Aquarian it's safe to have the friends but it's not safe to go into another one of those deep deep um soul relationship connections uh, because of how they've ended in the past I've, I've, my heart has been broken many times this year uh, this lifetime and um, two two of the biggest ones were four-year relationships so as much as I'd like to think that I moved on and it was fine and everything happens for a reason like my delicate Piscean moon side like gets really you know the highs were high and then there was this huge depression that happened after both of those so I think a part of me gave up on like is started playing it safe for 10 years after that and then all it was was my coach saying it sounds like you don't want to play it safe with these like easy relationships where you don't go deep and it sounds like what you're wanting is this goddess and it was just the clarity that I got from that and then I literally messaged her you know right after the call and she could just feel the power of the, the divine masculine in all of us it was so direct so clear so penetrating she even told me that while she was trying to connect with her ex there was this energy that was like i'm claiming you like you you know we're i'm saying yes to you um not from like an unhealthy place just from a yes i'm I'm choosing you yummy it doesn't sound dominating at all it sounds like something a woman loves to hear that's what they say women want to be claimed and 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 want to be chosen want to be number one they don't they don't want these flaky guys who are like maybe maybe yes maybe no um and that's all it was it was my coach saying maybe from her own frustrations of guys just being flaky and not taking a step and it's like no it's like men too afraid to go after what they want or take everything involves a risk so maybe there's a risk in saying let's do it let's give it a chance but let's go all out let's not have one foot in one foot out so that's all I did that's powerful thank you for sharing it you know my experience it's very interesting being alive right now and everything I've seen since I've been alive. But now is a fascinating time because I'm very much in the spiritual community. And, you know, I go to festivals and I go to the conferences and I go to the concerts and I go to the ceremonies. And there are very beautiful people. 
right? Mm -hmm. They're all beautiful, you know, wearing whatever clothes we all wear. And sometimes it's not too much clothes. And I think it's really easy, especially I live in California, you know, all that glitters is gold. And to be exactly what you're talking about, to go, oh, that person's attractive. Oh, that person's attractive. I mean, it's really just an outside. It's not a real knowing or an intimacy with somebody. And I think the ability to claim for men and women, no, this is what I'm about. This is my stake in the ground for who I am. I deserve this level of love. I desire this level of love. I desire this experience, unlike anything I grew up with and unlike anything I have thus far experienced, you know, and, and let that person come forward uh, from the universe who can meet that energy because it is so powerful yeah. and magical to, to go there with somebody. Yeah. Want to do a prayer about it? Yes, please. Okay, let's do it. Because <laughs> um, I feel it's so universal in our in our community, not aligning with, you know, it's like, yeah, we're doing all this work. And it's like, can we also have a relationship that nurtures and nourish, nourishes us mm -hmm. while we're doing all this spiritual work? So we ask Source God Universe to clear anything in the way of us being able to receive the maximum and let go of what no longer serves us by alchemizing it into what is best. And we pray and, and set the intention and invocation that if there's anything in the way of us being able to receive all that we're desiring in our ultimate relationship, starting with self, followed by our ultimate life partner, if there's such a thing, followed by our ultimate soul family, soul tribe, uh, followed by our actual physical family, if that's best to connect with them and how best with our guides and angels, with Mother Earth, with the divine, with our inner children, inner teenagers, all aspects of selves. Um, if there's a belief system, if there's an emotion, if there's a past trauma we're still holding on to, if we have unhealthy walls or boundaries in our hearts that are blocking that from flowing in, if, they're, if the ego and the inner child are afraid of abandonment and rejection and hurt and trauma, would you like an infinity healing to clear that, reassure all parts of ourselves that it's safe, show all parts of ourselves that we can have um, our um, to call in our queen, our king, our soul family, soul tribe, all the things that our heart is desiring on a deep deep level showing all parts of us that it's safe and all the great things that will happen when we do that yes yes mm -hmm. and showing us that we can have healthy boundaries in that relationship we can say yes to things we can say no to things we can stay in our high frequency this can be something that adds value to our lives supports us more to drop into the feminine if needed drop into the masculine depending on your inner dynamics uh, to allow for wholeness, uh, to allow for balance and to allow for everyone to play their divine role in however it's best. Um, uh, and, and please add more that what we know to ask for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. So it is. So it is. Thank you. That's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Um, we are talking about abundance and manifesting and part of manifesting, and we will get to money is of course, relationship with self and others. And yes. I would like to follow up in that beautiful healing prayer you just gave us mm -hmm. and ask you, so as a man, and I understand you're newly stepping into this in mm -hmm. a way, mm -hmm. how are you? king to your queen what does that look like mm -hmm. what kind of behavior what kind of qualities do you embody to be Great that question, Betty. um i've started men's circles i've joined men's circles i've listened to the lit literature and um the things that we committed in in the men's circle that i started was anytime we are in fault that we never make an excuse for it um so in a relationship if we messed up, we messed up. I'm sorry that happened. I take full responsibility for that happening. Uh, never saying because of something outside of ourselves. Um, to allow for the trust to happen. Like it's not that your partner is not going to mess up. We're all going to fall short at times. We're going to, the disappointment will come up 
um, hurt will come up, um, expectations won't be met, right? But it's when those things happen, uh, the, the king energy is able to say, I take full responsibility for my part. The king energy will not uh, have, um, it, you know, like if, if you're pre if you're dumping something on me, but it's really yours to claim, I've got that Scorpio and Jupiter too. We, we have strong BS detectors. We know when something's not true. Better known as gaslighting. Yes. Uh, the, the, the king energy within men and women can go, actually, no, uh, that doesn't resonate with me. Maybe tune into that, look into that. The king energy will not, uh, is not stuck in boyhood in Peter Pan world. Shout, you know, bless all the fairy energies that we're connected to, but they're able to um, give up short term. It's almost like short term play energy, which is fine, but the king energy is able to go. I want something deeper, more meaningful. I know what I want and I'm going after it and I won't settle. So no settling uh, and no like saving. You know, a lot of empaths in our community are like, let me find someone who, you know, it's like we're attracted to the people who are broken and let's fix them and heal them. And, but why, uh, my friend told me this term, term my, one of my mentors says with batteries included. So they're either where we're at or they're even higher in some realms, um, in, in some areas so that we're not like bringing them up to where we're at. So those are some of the examples I feel. Wow. Gorgeous. So I'm going to probably... integrity with yourself too, Debbie. So even forgetting the outside world in your day to day, are you, uh, where are we settling, uh, and not being our full King, right? So my full King can, instead of, you know, going for fast food, my, my King energy is going to make sure I eat something nourishing and, you know, eat it in a, in a, just eat it with some nature and sun time and like loving myself enough when my body needs time out to go to nature, to go to mother earth, to go to the ocean. Um, yeah. Wanting the best from myself and, and from life as well. That's beautiful. I, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to come to your group. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to stalk your group. Cause if they're <laughs> churning out men like that, I can tell you there's probably a lot of us who'd be very interested in getting yeah. to know a king like that. Yeah. It's and, a you know, the responsibility, the ability to respond is everything for both sides. I'm sorry I did that. And here's how I'll rectify it in the future. That's yeah. how built is trust. And yes. that is how you create true intimacy. Yeah. Uh, you'll have a million great times, but when the shit hits the fan, it's amazing to know your partner doesn't run and your partner doesn't throw blame back on you, but can really stand up and, you know, be human about its foibles. And it and reminds one thing I learned me from my, sorry, Debbie, one thing I learned from my last relationship is yeah. the fixer in us drives women crazy sometimes. Oh, um, yes, it does. Fixer. It's yeah. Nice. So getting really good at going, Debbie, are you sharing that because you just want to be heard? Or are you sharing that because you would like my support in it? Just getting into the habit of asking that. Because if you tell me, no, I don't need you to fix it. I'm a powerful goddess. Like, I'm just sharing vulnerability it doesn't mean you need to save me. Then I can go, oh, okay, thanks. She just wants me to hear. So that's another hack. And then knowing sometimes, so when, when I checked in with a women's circle, when I was living in this community, she was saying the, the women were not feeling supported. And when I, when I was facilitating with the men, a lot of their partners were in the women's circle. And all I can hear from the men is we'll do anything for our Queens. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't add up. So what I gathered from that is there's a unsafety for women in knowing what they're wanting and an unsafety in asking for what they want, right? So part of, if we can bring the men and women together and do, uh, we'll be doing a Tantra retreat here in, in uh, Playa del Carmen or Tulum in Mexico. And part of the exercises would be getting comfortable asking for what I want. So the exercise I would facilitate, Debbie, if we were in a workshop right now, uh, let's say we were partnered up, I would ask you to tell me, where do you want me to massage you? And it's called stepping into your diva, because a lot of women are like, hey, I'm getting a massage, I'm not going to be a bitch about it. So but it's like, no, get comfortable being like, I want it tighter here, more to the left, deeper here. So it's getting comfortable stepping into that diva, that queen that can go more like, you know, a lot of times it's like, I'm getting a massage, why should I ask for more, but ask for more, keep giving us specifics, 
Um, don't stop till it's exactly what you're wanting. And it gets us comfortable going, wow, I can ask for what I want. And if I don't know what I want by experiencing it, I can get more clarity and I can ask for it and it's safe. And the response always has to be from the king. Thank you so much for uh, asking for that, right? So we're reaffirming it's safe to ask and we're thanking them because the worst thing for a man is to not know. You know, it's so exhausting for a man to try to guess what it is and do a hundred thousand things and get depleted and still feel that they're not good enough because it's not being asked directly. So let's do an infinity healing to clear what's stopping us from knowing what we want. And would you like an infinity healing to ask for what you want with ease and with grace, feeling safe to do so and receive it fully? Would you like that? A hundred percent. Yes. Yes. Done. That's it. So just a heads up for those of you that don't know that with the infinity healing, as you say, yes, you're allowing source God universe to do infinite things for you. So it works on the beliefs, the fears, emotions, root traumas, et cetera. Um, and all you need to do is say, yes, you're giving your consent, your thumbs up to allow it to clear what's in the way. So I'm not doing it. You're not doing it. You're allowing it to happen. And I can and feel what's that. coming but, through for me is you know, yes. so I'm actually really good at that. You know, I would have no problem telling somebody where here, harder, softer, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. Uh, so for me, the healing would be more like uh, having said, being very clear about my needs, but mm -hmm. not having them met or heard or cared about. An example. Oh, boy. Yeah. So telling somebody, you know, I really wish like my love languages are affirmation and physical touch. Physical touch. I think I have all of them pretty yeah. strong, but sure. those are super dominant. So when I get a lot of verbal feedback, when I get a lot of physical, you know, when I'm really seen, yeah, um, that matters to me or communicate. I love communication and all of that. And so if I'm telling somebody, you know, I know that maybe service is your modality, but it would meet my needs tremendously if you can even come halfway and give me yeah. some of that. But I'm yeah. told, well, that's just not my way of being, or, you know, I'm doing the best I can kind of thing. Those yeah. kind of things are really a turnoff. <laughs> so I love that you're bringing this up, Debbie, ultimate hack for relationships. I mean, like kindergarten class, number one would be um, love languages, find out yours. So if yours is words of affirmation, I mean, a Leo's love language is, um, is uh praise right oh, 100%. So that makes sense right yeah so and then they want to be seen not in an egotistical way because the more leo seen the more they fill their energy the more they can give back it's mm -hmm. actually it serves the whole because the sun feeds the whole planet right so mm -hmm. you guys are ruled by the sun so it's not a selfish thing because when a leo's filled their mission is to give their energy look you're exactly <laughs> <laughs> i got it yeah. So, I mean, like I said, the, the masculine's response has, uh, I feel a healthy masculine, need, um, the response would be, thank you for sharing. And, and let me know, you know, so is, is that person open to hearing it? Was it delivered in the best way? Are they a fit? But that it's so good that you know that because you're giving them the hack on how to, how to feel, how for you to feel loved. So, um, I remember one of my Leo mentors being like, she texted her partner and she's like, I need you to tell me something sweet about me, right? Like when I see you in a few minutes. So it's like you're teaching them how you want to be loved. I want you to give me a massage for the next half an hour. I want you to eye gaze with me for the next half an hour. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell me five really nice things about me. Like my delicate inner child, Piscean side, if I feel I did some something wrong to someone and they're really mad at me, like I, I can't just pretend I can't just move on. Like I'm, I'm in, I'm in it. Um, and sometimes I'll ask for, can you remind me of some, something good about me? Cause right now I just feel like really low. Yeah. <laughs> so we can ask for it. And, and, and for you to receive that when they're doing the acts of service, like for me, that's my dad's love language. So before I'm like, dad doesn't love me. And then I'm like, Oh, every time dad was doing things, that was him saying, I love you, son. And so also, appreciating them for how they're giving love and also asking for like some people it's some people just can't yeah so, or so, it's not that they can't it's it's not going to come 
second nature, everyone can. So technically, every, any relationship you're in, even if it's not their, even if it's their worst, hardest one, let's say, still is capable of saying, Debbie, you have beautiful eyes. I love your hair. Love your outfit. Whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And you, you, you're asking for it, which is amazing. And now, um, we, yeah, we need to educate our partners on how we want to be loved, and we want to know how they feel loved and reciprocate that. My, I don't like gifts that much, but that's my parents' love language. So every opportunity I get, I, I can, I, I like try to send them gifts and stuff. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. You know, hearing you say that and your sweet Piscean moon energy. It um, came out. Yeah. So I have a hack about that. Okay. I learned this moons ago. Yeah. Um, when I was taking a like a karate, it was a karate based warrior class, but it it, it brought up a lot for people in the class. And um, mm. I strangely was so good at it, the whole mm. falling into and one of the things they taught us that I've held on to ever since, um, because there was a lot of communication going on, and people would often look to me like, well, how do you feel about me? How do you see me? And they taught us that the first thing you say is everything good, and then you follow up what, what could be corrected or what mm -hmm. may trigger, et cetera. That and I found it bad. to be, I've used it to this day, and I think it's the most loving way. So I might say to you, Tarek, you are magnificent. You're so, not only just so brilliant in what you do out in the world, but you have such a beautiful heart. Like hanging out with you is like a festival, just, you know, <laughs> the two of us. And I enjoy you so much. And I'm so glad you were born. I really am. Wow. And I want you to know that occasionally this thing happens between us and you say you're going to follow through and you fall mm -hmm. short for some reason. And I don't know what's going on in your space, mm -hmm. but because I care so much about you, I just want yeah. you to know it's impacting me in a really poor way. And is there anything you could do to alleviate that? So there's no impact between I us, right? I love that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for uh, starting it that way. Like how can someone react negatively to that? And I love that you did that. Nonviolent communication is a real thing. And if you go, the worst thing you can do is say, you made me feel this way. Because technically that's now you're in victim consciousness because you're blaming and no one can technically make you feel anything. You can choose to feel. You can say the worst things to me. I remember one lady for five minutes, all her stuff was coming at me, like all her childhood wounds, daddy, daddy wounds. And I was just like, imagining a mirror in front of me and I was imagining she was just like saying it all to herself and I felt great so we it was the worst things I've ever heard in my life and it just kept on going and um and then her life changed after that and she has kids now and, and home and family and husband wow. um it just had to come out uh and um yeah, so I love that you that's 100% how to do it. And the worst thing you can do is um, attack the person, blame the person. But if you go, hey, Debbie, when you shared that, I felt hurt. Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing I'm noticing in my communications, because I do my, I'm, I think Aries are very blunt, you know, um, and we're not sugarcoating it. And we could use more of that Leo sandwiching that you just did beautifully, um, you know, starting with the positive, adding some constructive concluding with the with the positive is what I learned uh, in one of my youth workshops. But um, if you just share like, how can someone attack you for saying I felt hurt? Mm -hmm. You could have said the nicest things to me and I could still say hurt came up for me. So we really need to get better at not taking on someone else's stuff, not feeling bad for when stuff comes up uh, and remember the art of open communication. Like we don't want to hold it in and let it fester. We want to share it openly. And my, my hack is Debbie, are you in a place where I can share openly and vulnerably about something that came up? And if you give me the okay, then I'll just say, when you said this, I felt this. So it's not about 
you making you wrong or blaming you there's underneath the blame if you dig in a little deeper there's an emotion a hurt a sadness some emotion that came up for you and if you can be vulnerable enough to share what that emotion is really that emotion just wants to be hurt and if debbie just goes i hear that sadness came up for you when you when that happened thanks for sharing is there any way i could support you you know maybe just hearing it is enough uh or maybe a hug who knows but yeah. that's another that's huge. That's huge because what you just gave us an example of is it's truly being heard is holding space for somebody and getting out of the way, you know, just yeah. detaching so you can hear someone else's experience. And it's a beautiful opportunity. I mean, sometimes there's just a wild misalignment in a moment and somebody truly didn't intend, but oftentimes there is something going on. And then it's a great time to own our shit and say, you know, it's true. Like I really had this going on and, and I, I just wasn't speaking about it. And instead it came out, you know, snarky and I I'm sorry. And, and you know what, I, I won't do that again. I'll be responsible yeah. for my stuff in the future. And it's when that happens, that is, you know, I really mm -hmm. think the angels trumpets go off because they're like, whoa, the humans have gotten it this time. <laughs> and it's, you know, they celebrate us that we can actually mm -hmm. create peace like that mm -hmm. at such a beautiful level. I love that. So it's before awesome. we shift into mula bula, which means money and prosperity. Okay. And what, in what language? Um, mula. Mula, like Italian language? Mula, I think, mula. I don't know what that is. It's just slang, really. It's slang. As far mula, as I know. Is it with a B? M-U-L-A. Oh, mula. Yeah, yeah, mula. I think it's uh, Italian or Spanish. Yeah, yeah. Mula. Mula. It's a beautiful way to say money. Oh, like it, so yeah. I would love, if you are willing, as a uh, conscious rap artist, hip-hop artist, if you will, like whatever moves you, I trust that will flow out of you to us. Mm -hmm. Would you gift us with something right now, a little bit of wisdom or fun? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So because you led with Mula, I'm going to do a one minute wrap. So you guys get a feel for the wrap and hopefully inspires you to check out some of my five albums that are online. And then I would love to share maybe a two minute after that. That's more of the Piscean bra emotional side. We're down. We are so with right. you. Thank you. So feel free. To, you're welcome. Feel free to receive this like a transmission. So and feel free to imagine it as we're saying it. Because I believe in just one thing, infinite abundance for all beings, so we can live like kings and queens, doing what makes our hearts sing. I believe in the new currency of trust and of equality for my brothers and sisters, because we all came here to be. We all came from the source. We've come a long way from home. We've got a long way to go. Share with everyone that you know. Everything they told us is wrong. Ever since the time we were born, we got to break free from this prison planet we're on. So don't hate on us when we're sharing our love. We just want to liberate you so you can rise up above. We're made of the same stuff. We're made of the same dust. If we can regain trust, then we will remain tough. Separation's a lie. Evolution's a lie. Don't believe in everything that you can see with your eyes. And we're banging our drums because the time has now come. Let's take a stand for what is right until we have won. Let's take a stand for what is right until we have won. Let's take a stand for what is right until we have won. <laughs> Let's take a stand for what is right until we have won. Yes, I hope. And then um, the Piscean uh, poem uh, that I, I've been hiding my Piscean side and now I'm leading with it. And it's been amazing. We've had people tell us like they were thinking of suicide and my music kept them going and all sorts of beautiful stuff. So this one's for anyone out there who um, can is always there for others, but has a hard time asking for support. A lot of Leos have that, Aries have that, Capricorns, Scorpios, you know, just, yeah, here we go. How are you people ask? My response is I'm great, but am I? Maybe what I'm really saying is I desperately need some support. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I'm falling apart. I've put together my broken self with tiny pieces of tape and it's all coming undone. Maybe what I'm saying is back off because you don't want to know. Maybe what I'm saying is I'm scared to have you care about me, to help me, to be there for me. 
I'm a lone wolf. That's how I've gotten here this far. And now you want me to let go of the very thing that has gotten me here this far, to surrender control, to trust again, the very thing that leaves me open and vulnerable, easily wounded. So I trust. I take the risk. I take the leap. I get betrayed again. My mind thinks above all the possibilities of getting hurt. I almost want it to be true. I expect it to be true. I can't believe you would truly love me. It has to be a conspiracy. I play hide and seek with those around me. Please be there when I need you. I reach out and then I hide again. No peekaboo. More like it's been nice to know you. I'm fine. But what I'm really meaning to say is I have found many ways to cope. I used to use food and drugs and alcohol to hide what's underneath, to numb me, sex and have you love me, overachieving, but it's never enough. Wow, look how much money I made, but no one gives a fuck. I need help. If you reach out, I may find the strength a month from now. What troubles me now are my own fears, my own power. What if every ambition was driven by the need to feel significant? What if everything I'm doing is not coming from the right place? There was a time I would drink myself to bed. I would cry lonesome tears, smoke to punish my heart for being so dumb, doing anything to help me feel numb. I used to make love. I used to be love. I used to see the world like a child, but now the clouds are dark and gloomy. The vibe keeps getting spooky. Changing the channel won't stop the fact that there's a horror scene happening somewhere in the world every second. And what is my aim? To be a millionaire? Do I really care? In many parts of the world, the aim is survival. In this part of the world, we're miserable and in denial. We take for granted all the freedoms we enjoy. We're living like kings and queens while we destroy it. But we are slaves. We're, we like to think we're sovereign, but we obey and we pray to those who pray on us every day. We choose fear or love. We all have that divine spark. We all have a dark embellishment. The dark ones want us to believe that that is all that we are. The light ones want to think that we're all light. I feel so irrelevant. I can't change the world. I can barely change myself. What is the long-term plan here? To find someone to love me, to care for me. That's the role that I play. It makes it easier for me to keep numbing myself till it's done, feeling high when I'm number one and feeling like a loser when I succumb. I have layers upon layers of being made fun of, of being put down, of feeling lesser than, feeling worthless, feeling not deserving, so confused and uncertain. God, is there anybody out there? Or have I been, pray have I been praying to the clouds? I'm sitting back with little faith watching the devil play a checkmate. We're all pawns in this global chess game. Part of being human is fighting demons and that's our self-hate. I know it seems dark and like the sun, you keep shining from above. I'm slipping, I'm sinking, I'm giving in to temptations, distractions, empty ambitions. It's all an illusion. I'm taking a time out, forgot it was a game, started to believe the screams and shouts. You want us to believe in it it's so bad, so we feed you with our emotions. What if we all started hoping and dropped a million love explosions? What if we all drank of the divine's potion? What if we all spread our wings and started soaring? What if every moment was exhilarating and not boring? What if we stood up to the plate, bake and eat the cake, shake and learn, uh, share and le learn from mistakes, ending hate, ending procrastinate, ending being slaves, ending the old ways, ending being fake, ushering in the new way, being brave, being bold. All you ever need to know has already been imprinted inside of your soul. Now go. That deserves a pause to digest. Thank you. That's so powerful. Thanks. That's your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I understand where you just wrote that from. And um, so just to let people know, because you've alluded a little bit in the beginning, Tarek, how 
you grew up feeling less than and stupid, but can you give us a bit of the hero's journey, if you don't mind, but a quick version of who you were and what you went through? I mean, I, I've even heard you speak where you said like you had nothing, you were paying your rent with a credit card and then who you've become, what happened in between to allow you to be who you are? Thank you for asking. Um yeah, just having a father who is, I mean, I love my father. We're so close right now, but growing up, I thought he hated me. Um, I felt put down. I never remember feeling praise, getting a hug, getting a, how do you feel? How are you feeling? Need someone to talk to? Basically, I was like, okay, um, you know, uh, my dad would come back home frustrated from work. And I think I was an easy target because I'm like a really clear mirror. So it's like you. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just, I feel he was trying to say, Tark, I want to toughen you up. You seem really sensitive and the world's a tough place and I want you to succeed and I don't want you to fail because I failed a lot. I feel that's what he was trying to say, but it came across in like you're, you failed in this, you know, you're not measuring up here. You're not good enough here. You got to do better. You know, you don't, you don't want to be a failure. You don't want to grow up to be a garbage man, like just all these things. And I think his scorpionic way was like, sometimes I watch when I used to watch uh, chef Ramsey stuff, it's like very harsh because his is Scorpio too. And it's like, it's like put down, but he's trying to say, get up. He's trying, it just doesn't come out right. Um, and so I just internalized that, personalized that almost every day I felt I was um, pushed to a breaking point. So when people say something about like the depth of my heart, I feel like, well, you don't want to know what caused it because it was like daily pushing to a breaking point where I just like crushed, like just felt crushed. And um, the second I would go to my room and just, you know, I'd be crying. And the second I had stillness, I would just feel the presence of the divine there. And there was in that moment, no need to cry anymore, but it just continued. And then uh, eighth grade shaved my head, got into like rap music and heavy metal. And it just became external instead of imploding. It was like exploding. So getting into a lot of fights, but it was like Robin Hood style. I would like pick on the bullies. <laughs> I was like bullying the bullies um, and just being a class clown and, and then fast track when we immigrated to Canada and I was in Toronto, I was overdoing everything, alcohol, drugs. And yeah, one night my heart felt like it was going to stop. All my friends were passed out. The sun was starting to rise. It's the next day. I'm still drinking and smoking, feeling miserable. And I thought my heart was going to stop. It felt like it did. And I wasn't afraid of dying. I was afraid of wasting my life. So I prayed to God, source, universe to give me a second chance my heart started beating. And then that was like my rebirth in that moment. And I prayed for a purposeful career and I discovered healing and I started doing it through hypnosis and people were blown away. My, my teacher had like a hundred certifications in her room. She was featured in the Oprah magazine. She had celebrities wanting to fly her out. And part of our uh, course was to practice with people and she brought in one of her clients and I literally spent like 20 minutes with her client and her client was like, wow, I've been working with your teacher for years and what you just did in like 15, half an hour, I, I can't remember the time, let's say it was half an hour, she said was superior to all the sessions. Um, and now, you know, like, yeah, that gave me the confidence, you know, from not getting a lot of praise to hearing you're really good at this was um, a great ego boost. And um and then, yeah, just terrible relationship with money. It's in my Chiron. For those of you who get astrology, Chiron and Taurus. So I'm destined to experience hardships with money. Growing up in Dubai, I saw super wealthy people and super poor people. And I always sided with the poor and the underdogs. But I had to heal my judgments towards wealthy people and towards money. So I had to forgive myself for the judgments towards money. I had to forgive my, my, uh, my whole journey started when I forgave my father. And I emailed him. He was in Dubai. I was in Toronto. So step one is to forgive. And ever since I've done that, I've been blessing it forward in every session in the last 13 years. 
Um, and then I had to forgive my judgments towards money. I, had, I imagined money as a persona, like a celebrity, you know, that was really good hearted, but I thought it thought it was too cool for me. <laughs> so I was like, it doesn't think it's too cool for me. It's actually really generous and it's a fun energy and it's playful and it's, you know, abundant and, and generous. So I was like, sorry for the forgive, uh, sorry for the judgment. Um, and then I went from being broke and on welfare. I had to really trust. I prayed for help. It came my way. And normally I'd get afraid and run away. But this time I broke the cycle. I prayed for help. It came my way. I felt the fear and I still said, yes. So that was that one shift of, oh my God, what I asked for has come through in the form of a person, a teacher, a book, a course, something. It's not going to come in your comfort zone when you're cuddled in bed and like feeling safe. It's going to come from, oh my God, I'm going to take a risk and put something on my credit card or, you know, and, and I love the story because the, my first mentor was in Chicago and, and I like barely had money. I, I literally went in full faith to this workshop that I felt was speaking directly to my, my challenges as a healer, wanting to make more money. And I, again, debt, welfare, like government assistance. And I find some, I reach out to the organizer. He says, there's someone from Toronto driving to Chicago. So I get a ride with her. And then when I get to the hotel, I'm like, listen, guys, you're not responsible for me, but I just wanted to like share this. So I'm not keeping it to myself. Like I have no money for a hotel room. <laughs> And, um, but I still had the guts to like ask, I don't like asking for help, but I still had the guts to say, uh, if it's possible, like literally right before you guys go to bed, they had like a four bedroom, three bedroom with a couch somewhere. And I was like, I could just like go to sleep as soon as you guys are ready to go to bed. I'll just pop in sleep and I'll be out before you guys even wake up. <laughs> I was like 25 at the time or no, 27, maybe, um, and they they said no first, and then they're like, you know what, you can do it. And then same thing with my mentor. He's like, listen, uh, there was like a hundred healers in this room, and uh, I think five of us signed up to work with them. And he was like, well, if you want my work, it's it's five hundred a month for starters, and then it moved to a thousand a month. And I, in my mind, I was like, that's it's easy. I'm just going to settle for this workshop. I'll implement what I learned in these three days. But I knew in my heart that it was it was to sign up to work with him. And that simple exercise I've been busting it forward ever since is what are five to 10 ways you can make an extra 500 bucks and then just circle the one that feels the juiciest. So the excuse of I don't have the money to invest in mentorship or courses or whatever is I've experienced it as an excuse because I used it. I was like, I actually really don't have the money. And I was like, you know what, if you really want it, my, my mentor was like, if you want it, and he just threw the pen, like, if you don't want it, leave. And he's a Leo. Uh, he's got, he was a Leo as well. And, and that reverse psychology actually worked on me. I was like, I actually do want it. So I signed to work with him. And then I, I knew I was just going to do one of those five things that I circled to make that extra 500. And that's it. I made the extra 500, paid him, went from being broken on welfare, clearing $30,000 of debt. Um, figuring out the business side of things. And with my infinity healing, I was able to heal my traumas and uh, manifest more fun, um, heal my inner child wounds and forgive and, and all of that. So between those two things, that's what I've been doing to, for other healers is showing them the blueprint to hit. So I went from broke to 10,000 in 10 months. And most of my clients hit 10,000 within um, th the three month mark. So we're able to do it a lot faster. Wow. You said, yes, that was the secret. And I love what you shared. I learned that years ago um, when I first started going to workshops and, and this particular trajectory, like the final workshop, it had a huge price tag to it. It was like an, oh my God, kind of price tag. And I, you know, that, that weight, that feeling like I want this, but oh, I can't have this. And I remember the gentleman who was teaching this said, I want you to write a list of everything you could possibly do to create the money or sell. And mm -hmm. suddenly my mind was, I went to my garage at the time. I went, oh my God, I have that artwork and I have this. Yes. And there were things I wasn't using. And I mean, there was the crazy thing like lottery ticket, you know, do that, sure. but don't bother. Yeah. But I mean, it's really more realistic stuff. And, you know, I created the money. 
it happened. I created the freaking cash to do wow. it. And so, yes, this is very, very, very powerful. If you're a yes, you have to know the universe is going to meet you. It's a 401k plan. You invest, they invest. Yes. So when you like say that. this, Tariq, at, um, so there's something you talk about in your uh, work, which is, and this is, now I like want to push, let's push a little and create some pressure. Go. We yes. can double our income working yes. half the time in, mm -hmm. I'm in, can you offer I'm some in. specifics about that? Yes. Thank you. I love that question. And, and that comes literally from some clients telling us they've achieved that. So, um, so, uh, working smart versus working hard. So get, really getting clear on what is it that you love doing? What is your greatest soul offering? Sometimes we're doing a hundred things, you know, fire signs or old souls who've learned so many things over all these lifetimes. You know, sometimes like we were talking about music earlier, Debbie, sometimes creativity. Yes, you can generate like I, I did a crowdfunding and generated 10,000 for two albums. So you can find, you know, you can generate income from your creative uh, passions. You can have your whole all your money come from that. Um, but the first step I would say is, is feng shui your services. Like what, what needs to be eliminated? What, like, I love cooking and uh, that's my dad's love language. He'd always make us these yummy meals. And that's his way of saying, I love you, or I'm sorry. So I learned that from my father and I, it's still my way of loving my inner child or loving others. Um, and Lebanese food is so delicious. Um, <laughs> side note. And <laughs> I have um, the best Lebanese restaurant here, by the way. It's a yeah. mile from my house and it is a constant like go-to. Home, home oh, cooking. The best. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So you know, you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. And um and uh where was I going with this? Yeah. So get yeah, so how to double your income uh, working half the time is figuring out what are the things that are taking up all your energy. So Nowadays, you can literally hire someone for like eight bucks an hour, 10 bucks an hour. You can barter with someone. Make sure you're not doing the things that drop your energy. There's certain activities we do that just deplete us, right? So if one, it's not your brilliance, two, you hate doing it, that's a good sign to start there and find a way to either barter it, uh, barter for it, offer some healings in exchange for some tech work or uh, social media work or, or whatever, website, web designing. Um, and then... Yeah, just it's uh, the visual of roulette. So in roulette, the safe, the mind wants to play it safe and it wants to spread its um, the chips on different all over the table, right? Because then it increases the chances of winning for those of you who know how roulette works. Um, but the soul wants you to place all your bets on your greatest soul offering. So imagine taking all your invest, like all your risk and placing it on one number. And that one number is basically your greatest soul offering. So you're going all out on the thing that brings you most joy, most fulfillment is your greatest soul offering and can lead to the most amount of profits. And by doing that, you're telling the universe, I'm not afraid. I'm clear. It's a clear transmission, clear communication. And you're stepping out. You know, we, we need to face like, Part of your medicine, Debbie, is getting people to be bolder and getting themselves out there in the right way, not being afraid, not holding back. And by telling the universe, this is who I'm here to be and claim, not like hiding it, you're claiming it. Like what, today I led with some poetry. I led with some rap. I didn't like keep that to myself. We led with some healing. I didn't hide that from you guys. I shared the vulnerability in Rana. So what if I was to hide all of those things, but they're the greatest part that my soul can offer. So by leading with them, claiming them, valuing them, and, and also just letting everyone know, like there's this rule that I have that says um, everyone, assume that everyone that's attracted to you and you're attracted to them, that you have gifts for them and they have gifts for you. So not from a place of, hey, I need to tell you what my business is because I need more clients, but from a place of, if I, if Debbie doesn't tell me what her superpowers are, and I don't share what my superpowers are with Debbie, we're going to miss this opportunity to bless each other because the universe brought us together to share energy. Sometimes it just happens through the higher self. Sometimes it happens through collaboration, like podcast exchanges. And sometimes it could happen through sharing a conversation or healing or whatever, but assume that 
everyone around you, even in the most um, random places, you're at a cafe, literally sometimes all it takes is just starting, someone overhears you having a conversation or you initiate a conversation. And, you know, one of my clients uh, yesterday was saying how when I was doing a healing session with her, literally she got off the call and the person sitting next to her was overhearing her whole conversation. And that person ends up working with her, paying her a thousand every single month for her work. So the miracles are all around us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, less, less is more. There's the 80-20 principle that we dive deep deeper into. There's 20 things of what you're doing that's leading to 80% of profit and fulfillment. So focusing on those. Mm. And I've never before heard those words, feng shui your business. Oh your business. <laughs> my God, that's so powerful. Yeah. I love that. So get rid of the clutter and yeah. where there's spaces that are not actually assisting you. Cause of course, feng shui is very personal to the person mm. and their space. So there's all sorts of ways to design things. So they operate for you, the person to bring in the abundance in every area of your life, or if there's an area that's not working to offset that. So it does work for you. 100%. And, and you've got cancer and Leo. So Leo's love expansive spaces. Um, and I stopped using the word expensive. I started using the word expansive. When people say, wow, that's so expensive. I go, no, it's expansive. It's going to stretch you out of your comfort zone. It's going to make you become more of who you are. So you want to do something that's expansive. And then you all, I always say, whenever I invest in something, I go universe, whatever I invest, may this money come back to me times two, times three, times four, times 10, uh, uh, right away in, in, in infinite ways. That way, every time I'm making an investment, it actually is an investment. It's not a cost and it's not a price. I always say it's an investment because it's going to come back. And not only will, it, will we get it back when we set that intention financially, but we're going to get it back spiritually. I always say, may it all come back to me a hundred, uh, like double, I go through all the numbers. I go like, I get my money back right away in record time, times it by two, times it by five. And then that I get it back. I get the investment back on all levels, right? And, you know, so there's like different ways of investing. I and like even the, food, the foods that we eat, sometimes we'll eat something from a stress place and then it just sucks out all our life force. But then mm -hmm. when we're eating a meal that we took the time to nourish ourselves mm -hmm. and put a lot of love into it or go to a restaurant and it's like a high frequency meal, try to look at your foods as investments. Like, is this going to give me more energy or is it going to take away more energy? Because then everything, your friendships, your, your things you do in your downtime, the, the content we're absorbing, like this is a great investment of your time right now, listening to this because it's going to give you so much, you know? I can't stand waste. Like I literally will not go to a restaurant unless the food is amazing. It's not, not about price point, yeah. but I will not even bother. But if yeah. something is just a beautiful, sumptuous experience, I love food and I love wine. I'm a certified wine specialist. All of that wow. luxury for me, it's just, ah, it's so divine. And so, yes, I will. I was going to say for you, cancer is very important. Home uh, for a cancerian is so important. So it needs to be nurturing, nourishing. It needs to be your sanctuary. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for a Leo, if you're in a like small space with not a lot of sun, that's like miserable for you. But if you're in an expansive space with lots of sun and vibrancy and trees, you're going to feel expansive and then you'll show up in a bigger way as well. 100% true. And by the way, I hope everybody's resonating. I have a pen out because I was literally getting downloads when you were talking. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, all these ideas. So yeah. thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, and they say, Debbie, for manifestation, last thing is you want to follow the one like this is, they don't talk about it in the law of attraction. But um, so when we ask ourselves, what is it that we want to do that will lead to the maximum fulfillment and abundance and prosperity and alignment? is the thing that you're a 10 out of 10 in terms of uh, excitement and you're a 10 out of 10 in terms of believability. So sometimes in a moment you're like, I believe I can write a book right now and I'm 100% excited about doing it. Then you're in the sweet spot. And if you're, if you really want to do it, but then you start doing it and it's causing a lot of stress and anxiety and it's like not in the flow. And it's like maybe the universe saying, well, first get your energy higher, you know, take a break, you know, it, Really, the, there's the key to um, success is really mastering the art. And this comes from the Cancerian uh, 
aspect of ourselves is what am I, what is my being needing in this moment? And if we can kind of continuously come back to that as an anchoring question, what is my being needing in this moment? Might just be to like move my body a little bit, stretch a little bit, hydrate, eat less, eat more, rest more, work more, play more, you know, be, are we, and, and especially for, for women, um, women and yeah, just women in general right now, it's a huge challenge all over the world where women are more in their masculine. So it's fine to be in your masculine because that's how we get stuff done. But then if we're too much in our masculine, if women are too much in their masculine and they're wanting to call in a king who's very masculine, yeah. well, with the polarities, it's not going to work. So how? what practices can you do on a day-to-day -day that get you out of your masculine? So let's say you worked all day. So, you know, Leos are, are have that problem because it's very action-oriented. Um but but the cancer is great at like nurturing self and like want yeah feminine stuff so how can you receive you know receiving a massage brings you into your feminine i love lying down in the ocean and just letting it hold me so i'm like fully in a receptive mm. state lying down on the on the earth meditating under a tree lying singing dancing um you know what yoga sometimes can be very yin um breath work so what the, you know creativity journaling um so writing songs drawing coloring even making food gets you out of your head so we really need to find those activities that bring balance because if you're too in your masculine if you're imbalanced and you're too much in your masculine then it might um, block you from because what's magnetic to the to a man is a woman in her feminine so the worst thing is when yeah, it's just a few things that can shift in those moments that allow for the man to play their role. It doesn't mean that a woman needs the man because there's like, I don't need a man. I could do it all myself. Yes, you can. But the feminine in you wants to be taken out, wants to be provided for, wants someone to open the door for you. She loves it when she can just like not have to think of the hundreds of things and just be like, Debbie, Saturday we're, we're going on an adventure. You don't you don't even need to know what it is, hmm. you know, just. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it just helps you drop in into the feminine and just mm. be like, yes, this is what I've been craving all week, you know? Oh, that's so lovely. Those were such good examples. And I'm glad that you shared all of those. That's exactly what came up when you said, oh, when you've been working hard and you're in your masculine and her, you know, you're, you're producing, what can you do to shift? And the first thing I thought of was receive, receive. And then as you went down the list, I'm like, yeah, of course, creativity too, and nature. And so all those elements were so right on. And yeah, just to take the time to allow the kitchen. I'm big in that as well. And now that I'm in, um, I'm in shaman school for six months, boy, you know, we have all these processes we're doing and gifting people with. So eventually we get certified. And additionally, they give us a big ass amount of practices in the morning. And I'm not used to that. I walk my dog, I do this, I do that, but I mean, now it's like 20 minutes of breath of fire. And it's it's not just breath of fire like you do in yoga. It's like the shamanic version, the Peruvian version, the Inca method. And then it's okay. got, you know, bands of power. And then like there are rights after rights after rights. And, and the part of me that just loves to produce says, how do you stop this long and do it? But I also know that, the investment I'm making in this stillness, this beingness is it's already reaping rewards at yeah. centering and calming me and inviting in energies that I actually love to play with. Beautiful. So receive, receive creativity, nature, beautiful. And salutes, salute to you, Debbie, because the shaman, shamanic path is probably the hardest path on our planet. So you've chosen the hardest path the hardest initiations but then you're right the rewards are amazing thank you thank you awesome. i'm just following energy and it's been calling me for four years mm -hmm. and i did everything else around it and i finally surrendered and said it's not going away and i mm -hmm. know this is mine to do and so mm -hmm. i showed up. I created the money, just like you said, yes. and the time 
because there's a lot of homework, but it's like, if it's a yes, everything will fall into place. You don't go here, right? Yeah. The universe already has it handled. Yeah. Um, you wrote something beautiful, Tark, recently on Facebook, which was do one thing every day that scares you and watch your world change. And you learned this from one of your mentors, Manuel, Manuel Dagger. Dagger, who, by the way, just a month ago was on this show. I've known Emmanuel for okay. at least 12 years. Love mm -hmm. this gentle genius. Yes. He so, is a soul pro on so many levels, like similar upbringing, some uh, like yes, culture wise, like yes. yeah, so many things, music and healing. Yeah. Shout outs to, yeah, yeah. I, I learned that from him and it really stuck. Uh, for me, when someone teaches me something from that deep, heartful place that he's very, you know, very connected to, it registers. If a teacher teaches me things and it's all heady, it might go one ear and out. But if someone, shares it from their heart it really sticks with me and that was like years ago and it just popped into my head that day as I was doing something new that I was afraid of I was reminded of that and um and when my Virgo rising mind dissected it it's like the matrix we're in now is like beings that are reclaiming their power because they're choosing love mm -hmm. um it's almost like you're calling the bluff of fear it's like the fear mm -hmm. matrix wants you to believe it's real like the wizard uh, of Oz, right? They opened the curtain, they saw it was a scared little man. It wasn't a big monster, big, scary wizard. And that's the matrix we're in right now. It's like, it's, it's a game of what have we given our power away to because we were afraid. So I was afraid to challenge mom and dad. I was afraid to challenge cult uh, my culture, my religion. I'm afraid to challenge authority figures. I'm, a ch I'm afraid, you know, I'm afraid of getting out of my comfort zone. I'm afraid of being seen. I'm afraid of all these things that we're afraid of. Every time we choose one of those fears and face it, we reclaim our divinity, our power, uh, sovereignty, freedom, all of that. And I feel like it turns into this game of we were 100% like the sun, right? We were 100% infinite freedom, love, sovereignty. And throughout lifetimes with all the witch hunts and tortures and all the bad things that we've experienced and have done to others, all of it, right? We've been everything and everyone. Uh, we've given away a little bit of that uh, power. And now every time we... Uh, face of fear it's like an initiation to take your power back and it's like a game of now it's like a pie so let's say we're at tw let's say we're at 50 percent uh of our powers back and there's 50 percent of things that we're not getting our power back from because we're afraid of but every time we do them the pie increases so that by the time we're done this lifetime you know um we're back to 100 percent power and that's how we win the game so true yeah. I recently um, received an invitation to speak at a uh, huge event conference taking place in another country. And, you know, first I had to check them out, make sure they're legit. And then I looked at the past speakers and I'm like, oh my God, these are huge names in the transformational world. And then I had to write and say, how did you find me? And so because I do visibility, I'm telling you it works because okay. I didn't go seek them out. They found me by virtue of my visibility and invited me. And I was like, man, the first feeling was like, I'm so honored. The next feeling was like, what am I going to talk about? Because I haven't spoken for years because of COVID. And okay. I'm constantly changing so much. What I would speak about would be so completely different. Yeah. And so there's a part of me that wants to hide, run, heck no. Um, what do I have to share? All of this stuff. And then the share. part of me that teaches what I do from a soul level said, of course, you're a yes, sweetie. Of course you are. And of course, everything will fall into place. Mm -hmm. And how beautiful, because this yes will be get more yeses, more opportunities. Mm -hmm. I know how energy works. And I know that, you know, this is a time for me. I feel it in the midst mm -hmm. of all the fear you're talking about, in the midst of all the Bananarama uh, chaos. Yeah. This is also a time of recreation and rebirth, reemergence. Yeah. Like, who am I? We're coming out of this wild, dark cave of COVID. And it's yeah. like time to claim who I am and what my piece of the puzzle is here. And so I was a, I got into this hell, yes, and, and yeah. excitement. 
about doing this. And thank you, universe, for showing me just a glimpse of what's possible. Mm -hmm. and, and thanks for sharing that, Debbie. I feel like just showing up is more than enough. Like your presence is, I think Deepak, Deepak Chopra said, your, your presence speaks louder than your words can ever. Mm. You know, just like you being there is more than enough. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. That's a gift. So my dear, this is Dare to yes. Dream. What are you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals and visions? Mm, thanks for asking. Um, I'm going to say it in the I am as if it's happening right now. I'm so happy and grateful for feeling so fulfilled in being all that I'm here to be and sharing my full rawness and authenticity in every moment. I'm so happy and grateful for this beautiful plot of land that I um, take care of and it takes care of me and all the great food and fruits and veggies that we grow here and medicinal herbs and the beautiful soul tribe and community and my beautiful um, partner and my beautiful children and um, being able to be such a grounded anchor of divinity during these times and I'm so grateful that I've inspired millions of people to also anchor in um, and have uh, more sovereignty, freedom, and empowerment in their lives as we transition through this uh, tunnel to get to the other side where there's something that that's better than we've ever experienced on planet Earth. Someday we will uh, maybe have to do a rendition of Rising Appalachia's medicine woman together mm, yes i saw you love their music i sing that song and Do i love you. their stuff too yeah okay so if um if i had listened to it and come up with like a poetic rap part and then you can do your part and we can put it together 100%. i would love to do that okay done. this is done in the eyes of god goddess yes yes <laughs> Are you still doing Manifest a Miracle Monday and Super Healing Sundays? Yeah, so it's on Facebook. Um, so everything on my social media is there to, like a lot of people are like, oh, social media is ruled by this and governed by this. And it's like the intentions are bad. But like I go, it's like go where people are gathered and sprinkle that divine spark of inspiration. So if everyone on planet Earth is doing this, so be one of the things that, pops up on their in their screen to blast them with some divine activation so yeah every monday if you click like and comment yes that activates the infinity healing on miracle uh, manifest monday Man manifest miracle monday and all you need to do is just focus on what it is you want to manifest and then on sundays if you need any healing or support think of it could be like a, a part of the world. It could be someone, you know, it could be yourself and you just write what you need healing support for. But every week we're putting out YouTube videos of money healings and relationship healings. And I've got a link to share with you guys where I'm gifting you one of my albums and a DNA activation and, um, you know, 10 blocks for money and 10 blocks for empaths and all that kind of stuff. So there's tons of resources. I, I like to believe anyone who's, following me or around my energy that their their lives keep getting better and better we just had a lady tell us my music saved her from suicide last week we had a lady who told us she um, was in my monthly healing group and she had a huge lump on her chest and they said it was breast cancer and then a few weeks later she was listening to one of my youtube videos and i talked about how breast cancer could be over giving and under receiving and it clogs the heart and as i as she heard that she felt her lump and it was completely gone so that's a whole can cancerous lump completely cleared from the work that we do so we like you know we, we've heard that from people they, they just in our vortex things get better amazing and so people who want to participate is the best way to go to Tarek. TarkBB.com, T-A-R-E-K-B-I-B-I.com slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S with an S at the end, um, is the best way to just, you know, it's my birthday in two days, so I, I like celebrating my, by giving gifts. Um, and uh, spring equinox is like a spiritual new year, so 
uh, we've got my my latest album, Ascension 777, where we have like the goddess anthem, a light warrior anthem, um, just powerful healing songs with tons of powerful songs with powerful healings in them. They're not just rap songs. They actually have healing frequencies and uh, healing intentions in them to help you in different areas of your life. So yeah, check them out. It's all there. And then at the very bottom, if anyone's like, I'm feeling guided to work with Tarek. Um, so it's trauma healing work and it's also abundance manifestations. Um, uh, and there's like a link at the very bottom to book in what I call as a chakra reading where I just scan your energy, let you know where your block is. And, and then after that, I can learn more about what you want to manifest and we can share how I can help you get there. Thank you for coming on the show. I've so My enjoyed pleasure, Debbie. Yeah. And folks, if you want to follow him, T-A-R-E-K-B-I-B-I.com. And if you want the gifts, it's TarekBB.com slash gifts. And I end the show today with a quote from Beyonce from Bigger. If you feel insignificant, you better think again, better wake up because you're part of something way bigger. Step out your estimate Step in your essence and know that you're excellent. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, the weekly Dare to Dream podcast. Leave a comment and share. Send this to somebody you know who will enjoy it. Next week on the show, the amazing Sandra, aka Akura, is going to be here. Akura is a psychic medium, consciousness mentor, intuitive artist, and starseed. Akura will be talking about cosmic light codes and giving energy transmissions. Please remember everything that you heard today that you too can go from wherever you are operating right now to being visible and thriving. And there's so many free tools and paid tools that you have to work with. It's your time, right? We've all been waiting for you. Thanks for joining us today.